When you get into a Land Rover Defender, you don't hear a thing, and then all four wheels start spinning wildly as you're propelled into the horizon at speeds that shouldn't be possible in a Defender. There's something eerie about that. The Land Rover Pantera, a vehicle manufactured by two Dutchmen with a dream, is fascinating even though illogical. Converting an ancient Land Rover Defender into a camper van and driving it around the middle of the world is a fun project, a fantasy that was never brought into reality. Instead, the car was sold, which resulted in the launch of a bespoke automobile brand of international caliber. The Land Rovers and their brand new Pantera EV Defender are the subjects of this narrative. To begin, let's find out a little more about the Land Rovers. The Land Rovers coming together to establish a band is something out of a fantasy that might occur in the life of a young boy. It all started with the dream of two men, Daniel Van Oort and Peter Zeisser, who intended to complete a trip that would be deemed genuinely epic by driving a customized 1986 Land Rover Defender 110 across the world from cape to cape. As soon as the construction was completed, the car was in great form and ready to embark on a challenging voyage. By showing an interest in purchasing the vehicle, a lawyer stopped Daniel and Peter's intentions to travel with their newly built Defender camper van, which would have allowed them to camp out in the wilderness. Daniel and Peter could not seize this opportunity when it presented itself. After that, the two guys were hooked, and they set out to develop the Land Rovers, a company dedicated to collecting, restoring, and customizing vintage Land Rover Defenders into the most excellent possible customized autos for customers all over the world. Before we get into the specifics of the Pantera, it is essential to point out that the crew of the Land Rovers did not simply take a battery pack and an electric vehicle motor off the shelf and install them in a Defender chassis. Instead, they went through a thorough process of designing and building the Pantera from the ground up. It is necessary to emphasize that fact before discussing Pantera's specifics. Once again, this is the result of a once-in-a-lifetime convergence of creative ability, passionate enthusiasm, and cutting-edge technology. Things started going in a different direction soon after the Dutchman Frank Tice joined the most recent member of the company's executive team to take on the post of Chief Technology Officer. Frank came up with the idea to convert his own Volkswagen T2 bus into an electric vehicle. He approached Daniel and Peter at the Land Rover to inquire about possibly using some of the space in the company's workshop to get the conversion started. The three people, over time, developed a growing interest in electrifying automobiles and eventually expanded the blueprints for an electric Land Rover Defender. The cutting-edge bit of technology that was going to be employed would be one in which a motor would be directly fitted into each wheel. This was going to be the way that it was going to work. Lightyear, another Netherlands producer of electric vehicles, also employs this very same technology in their products. This cutting-edge technology has advantages over the traditional electric vehicle motors in autos because the drivetrain is directly mounted onto the component that needs to be powered, which in this case is the wheel. There is no energy loss due to the drivetrain's operation. This technique makes more efficient use of the space available in the chassis by positioning the motors in an external location. Consequently, there will be room for a larger battery pack, leading to enhanced range, improved weight distribution, and other benefits. In light of these revelations, work on a prototype of a vehicle that would later become known as the Pantera got underway. It was now ready to go into production and was put into operation by the end of the year before. The prototype of the Pantera has been granted the type of approval required for it to be driven on public roads because it has met all of the legal and safety standards in place. The production of the first customer-ordered electric Land Rover Defender is getting very close to being completed at the Land Rover facility. This is challenging because it takes significant amounts of time for firms to design, develop, manufacture, test, and produce a car before it is made available to the general public. To put this accomplishment into proper perspective, it only took the men from Amsterdam three years to finish everything. Do you want to hit that subscribe button or are we driving too fast? We at EV World attempt to collect all the unique data which interests you. So if you like the video, remember to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. The Pantera is not merely an easy conversion of a conventional car into an electric vehicle in any way, shape, or form. Once more, it is a car that has been developed from the ground up, showcasing everything that the Land Rover's crew can do. 
Again, every vehicle component is finished to the highest possible standard. This includes a fully customized inside that is upholstered in-house, customized trim if the buyer chooses, an in-house constructed entertainment system, and many additional features. The surface is gray and black with vivid green highlights that call attention to the electric vehicle components. It is easy to see the engine housed within each wheel due to how the green shines through the rims of the wheels. Even though it weighs close to three tons and is powered by diesel, the Land Rover Pantera is undoubtedly not a slacker, even though the average gasoline-powered Defenders currently come loaded with 450 to 650 horsepower. In terms of horsepower, it is comparable to the V8s, with each in-wheel motor delivering 150 horsepower. Nevertheless, torque is what truly matters, so it is essential to focus on that. And a good deal of it, considering that each wheel can generate an astonishing 1,600 newton meters of torque, which, when added together, results in a combined total of 6,400 newton meters for the most potent version. This demonstrates that the Pantera's torque output is greater than that of every other civilian automobile currently available. To put this into perspective, one of the electric vehicles presently owning the fastest acceleration title is the Remac Nevera, which develops only 2,360 newton meters of torque. Another electric vehicle that currently holds the record for the highest top speed is the Tesla Model S P100D. I'm going to assume that you've lost your mind. The Pantera is incredibly nimble despite being noticeably bulkier and having the aerodynamics of a cargo container. Despite these shortcomings, the Pantera is surprisingly quick. There are two separate iterations of the Pantera, with the battery pack constituting the critical point of differentiation between the two. The Pantera Cheetah has a range of 360 kilometers, a battery capacity of 120 kilowatt hours, and a power output that is much lower than that of its rivals. The Pantera Lion is the more powerful of the two options because of its battery pack's capacity of 200 kilowatt hours and its range of around 600 kilometers. Each one is outfitted with various features including regenerative braking, entirely independent suspension, and the ability to charge rapidly at a capacity of 150 kilowatts. At 5.5 seconds, the Pantera Cheetah can go from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour, whereas the Pantera Lion can accomplish this in 5.0 seconds. It is said that the Land Rover Defender is a legendary vehicle because it has practically been in battle, assisted in the rebuilding of entire countries, and been of service to people all over the world in the most challenging situations imaginable. It is safe to claim that everyone has a story to tell about a Defender. It is that easy to do so. When you see one being brought up to the Land Rover's standard, you want one even more than you did before you saw it. But there needs to be a way to get around the fact that the labor that goes into every bespoke building job is specialized. Everything beginning with the bare chassis is reconstructed using brand new components and finishes of the highest possible quality whenever feasible. It is probably supported by a chassis at least 25 years old, and pieces of the body that are in suitable shape have been salvaged wherever they can be. Nonetheless, everything else about it is brand new. We hope we didn't drive too fast through this information, and that you enjoyed it. Do you have any more facts or knowledge regarding this EV Land Rover Defender? If so, do let us know in the comments section, hit the like button, and subscribe to our channel for regular updates.